Jesus. Hi, everybody. It's Saturday. We're going to make tater tots today. Yeah, tater tots at home. If you're like me or you're like us, uh, Amy and Denise in the studio as always, or the kitchen as it is, uh, yeah, it looks a little dark in here because we don't have a light because we're amateurs. We forget. Uh, but we're going to make tater tots. And tater tots at home, pretty easy. Uh, you got some potatoes and some seasoning, maybe a little flour, one egg. Put it right together. Uh, there is about 20 minutes of prep. Um, right now uh, on the stove, I've got uh, two pounds to two and a quarter pounds of potatoes because that's what I had uh, parboiled. So what a parboil is, let's talk about that. A parboil is, I'm basically heating these up to get to a boil and then I'm gonna cook them till they're not done. So I'm only partially boiling them. Um, and then that way, uh, we can then, when they're partially cooked, we're going to grate them with our trusty, dusty uh, grater. And then we're going to we're going to use a small grate on these, and then we're going to um, we're going to squeeze all the water out. So uh, this is we're going to do potato, I think, this week, and or actually we're going to do fried things. Um, next Saturday, just a little housekeeping. We will not be live, but we will have. Uh, some sort of episode ready to go to be watched for Saturday. It'll be pre-recorded, so that's new. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but Because we're going to be camping. Yeah, we're going to be camping, and I don't have internet out there. I, <clears throat> I would literally do it live from the woods. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> So that means I'm going to probably do onion rings yes. because they are at this really great recipe now, and they are mm, they're so good. Uh this is a thing that I recommend. You're going to be heating up a bunch of oil to do these recipes, right? So if you're going to do um, like onion rings, or you're going to make tater tots, or even french fries, which I made french fries last night, they were really good. And the french fries you're going to do, is a whole, they're a whole thing because they're a little special. And we want to go over that and make sure that we're keeping up with that. Um, for, uh, thanks for everybody for being here. I hope everybody's had a good week. It's been, um, been really hot here. Today was really hot. I golfed today, um, and it was super hot. So I had to come home and take a nap. So if I'm a little squirrely or normal, that's why. So um, if we want to get started here, so you're probably used to buying tater tots because they're just easy, right? You get the big red bag, or rather make some real nice, throw them into your fruit, uh, your Oven, heat them up, good to go. Or if you're fancy and you want to fry those, they also get nice and crispy. Um, but we have a place here in Reno called the Brewer's Cabinet, and we were introduced to these homemade tater tots that they have. Um, it's a side that is like, it's got like a sriracha mayo and like a fried egg on top with green onions, and there's all types of stuff, and it's really, really good. So we've actually done. Um, we made the homemade tater tots before. I can't remember. I think we did. I don't remember. I know we've, we've attempted to make that dish at home um, as a kind of a starter appetizer. I've made it yeah. for breakfast with the fried egg on it. It's so good. With leftover tater yeah. tots. So that's really good. You can definitely make that. <clears throat> so really, all you're really going to need, and you can, you, can, you can season this up how you want, but... Um, we're going with granulated garlic, granulated onion, salt, pepper, um, a little dill, just to kind of throw a little in there. And then it calls for oregano, dried oregano, but I don't have it. So we're going to use Italian seasoning, which is, is most, like mostly oregano. Yeah. So, and then um, one large egg, we're going to beat this, and, and that's going to help bind. And there's also. Um, one tablespoon, or one teaspoon, no, tablespoon, I think, tablespoon of all-purpose flour. So, as you can see, like, the ingredients are pretty simple. Oh, and I also, you have, we have fresh parsley, because we're going to, once we get the uh, potatoes out, and they're going to be coming out here shortly, um, they're going to, we're going to put some fresh uh, herb in there, too. Why are we parboiling? Because the potato will 
not cook all the way through if we just grate it and put it in the hot oil. It's you gotta. It's sort of like the uh, French fries are a very similar thing. You could take for a uh, potato, dice it into sticks like a fry looks like, and you can put it in there into hot oil. But what you're gonna get is a crispy outside, and it's gonna be too crisp because you're gonna we're boiling or sorry, we're getting this oil to 350. Um, I have a candy thermometer. You can just go the, the or if they have oil thermometers again. If you want to be super fancy, you can use your thermopen and just get an instant read on that. Um, I like to know where my oil temperature is. That's why I continue to use the candy thermometer because the oil gets to a certain temperature, but when you drop in things that are cold or not cooked, the oil temperature is going to drop. So you need to be able to adjust the heat um, pretty rapidly. That's why I think a, a gas burner for doing sort of frying to me is better. If you have a fry daddy or a, a standalone fryer, those will work too. I just find a big, a big Dutch oven with has more surface room and you can get more in there and kind of let it do its business. And don't crowd your fryer. That's a hundred percent true. Because if you crowd, it's just going to come together. And then as it fries, you're going to have one big. And it's going to drop the temperature thing. too. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about your candy thermometer. Yes. We don't put those in the dishwasher, right? We should not put this in the dishwasher. I have put it in the dishwasher in the past <laughs> because I don't follow my own rules. But yeah, what I would do is because it goes in the oil and it's got glass and it's temperature, I mean, it's taking 350 degrees of oil or higher. So it's not like the, it's going to go crazy. But I would just, it's going to have oil splashed on it and you're moving stuff around with your spider to get it out. And just throw it in a hot uh, sink with some dish soap in there. And the dish soap, if you use like Dawn or one of those, you know, like it, it breaks up the grease. And so that'll help keep it clean. So. Clar clarify spider? Oh, spider. We talked about spider before. Uh, this is a decent sized one, or medium. I actually call this one small. I probably should get a bigger one. But it serves its purpose pretty well. Um, like I said, we did, um, Amy's cousin and her wife were in town last night, or they were actually in town until today uh, for a few days, and we made halibut fish and chips, and we did onion rings and french fries, and uh, it was really, 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 really good. We have leftovers, so I'm actually heating up the oven, uh, our convection bag, and we're going we're gonna to heat that up, and we're going to have that along with these um, as the main dish for our the potatoes that are par boiling, yes. what do they look like? Are they? Did you chop them up? Nope, they're whole potatoes. We want to keep them whole. That's a good. That's a really good question. You want to keep them whole because again, you want to be able. You need to have the room to be able and then grate them on here. Okay. So if they're smaller, it's just going to be a, a, a tougher time. This is. We we'll probably have a couple more minutes. It's boiling now, um, and then we don't want. If you probably know this, but potatoes are full of moisture. And if you put a potato that it was all <coughs> it's been grated and it's moisture and all the starch that's in there, and you put it in hot oil, it goes, <laughs> it's going to be bad. Um, if you didn't know, if you've got water, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit and, or 100 degrees Celsius. And if you, uh, and that's going to be at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, if you put that in there, the water's going to instantly boil. That's why it bubbles up like that. So when you have food in there, it's releasing water, and that's why it really is bubbling up. So you want to be careful dipping anything in there. We're going to take our time. But I've got a clean dish towel here and over there, and it's going to help. Um, I'm going to take all the grated potato, and I'm going to squeeze it. So you're going to see that. No, Billy, you cannot use the salad spinner. I feel like you could in the beginning. You could not. There's too <laughs> much moisture. It's too heavy. So... I know Billy's at home going, oh my God, another salad spinner thing. <laughs> but that's not, no, that's not. We don't want to use the salad spinner. I don't know. We might have to it's have It's too heavy. And also because by the time it goes in there, it's going to be grated. And so the centrifugal, uh, centrifugal okay. force is going to push it to the out and it's going to get caught in the colander pieces. And then right. we don't want that. You're so, no fun. I know I'm no fun. And I don't want to take the wind out of Billy's sails because he really wants us to do a whole... Salad spinner episode where we just use that to do everything. 
And maybe we'll do challenge episodes. I don't know. That's, you know, do it. Yeah. Uh, Aaron and hopefully Natalie are joining us tonight, and we have some Napoleon Dynamite references about uh, the tots. Yes. <laughs> Give me your tots. No. I love that movie. That, that, that's a, one of just an odd enough movie. Um, right. I have a question. Hold on, though. I have a question about your egg. That is a not just cage free, but pasture raised egg. I believe so. Okay. It's from Costco. They have, they're so good there. That's pretty good. Um, Here's something that somebody said the other day, and I think it's hilarious. They uh, they were talking about recipes on some things I, were, I was reading, and they were talking about how when we – there's certain assumptions about cooking that we make that you just don't think about, right? So when a recipe calls for an egg, it doesn't say what kind of egg. It doesn't say like a duck egg or chicken egg or anything like that. It just says an egg. So there's some – if you're going cross-culturally, though – and you're not like this is some things that they, I guess the point of the article is making is that we're recipe making is interesting because we make assumptions about certain things. Use um, the article was about flour, and it was like, oh, we just use flour. But now a lot of there's so many varieties of flour that people are like use all purpose or use bread flour or use cake flour, and and so, but internet, you know, when you're cross culturally and you say <clears throat> use an egg. Duck eggs might be what people have available. And if we're thinking, oh, one large egg. It usually doesn't say the size that, either. That's either. A lot of recipes, that's true. Just get an egg. Well, if you are getting your eggs from chickens of people you know, their eggs are typically going to be smaller or varied in sizes. So, you know, take that into account. If, if you're putting together something and or you're trying to do a, a recipe and you're like, uh, just have have what I have, but this egg seems small, <clears throat> you know, add another one. Yeah, I think that's that's. What if you get a double yolk? Is that okay? I, yeah, exactly. It's just more <laughs> protein and like, it's going to be more binder. So, all right, let's take, the, let's take this out. Because the show must go on. Um, so I'm just going to turn this off. This is, like I said, this has been going. Whoops. Oh. Something is going on here. Oh, okay. Sorry, folks. Hold, please. There we go. All right. I'm just getting the actually. Here it is. I'm getting a call because I want to drain the water off of these, and then they're going to be hot. So we're going to have to figure that out too. So this is, uh, like I said, two and a quarter, so like um, pounds of russet large potatoes. You'll see them when they. There's only four of them here. But, um, uh, no, I think they're going to be fine because I think they need to be warm to when you do the grating on them, just so it helps out. But I just need to, I think I'm just going to get um, a rubber glove and a paper towel and then go to town. That's what we're looking at. But, you know, these are. Oh, that's hot. It's very hot. Uh, this is good. Once we grate it. Let me see. Yeah, once we grate it, it's gonna make it's gonna be easy. Okay, is it is it squishy at all? No. Okay. You don't want. To, I don't think. The, I mean, it just says six to seven minutes. You guys okay. kind of go. All right. Let me get a, let me get a glove. Um, Doug is getting a glove. I would recommend going out and buying yourself a box of these gloves. Um, well, don't buy like medical grade because our our folks need those, but right. But these are, you know, kitchen grade like, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I use these a lot, especially in situations like this where it's going to be, um, I don't want to get crap on me or a mix. If I'm mixing like hamburger and stuff together, then yeah. You don't want raw meat under your fingernails? No, I don't want raw meat under my fingernails. So I'm just going to take this and a paper towel. I'm going to double up here. And uh, okay. So you feel good about that? You're not burning? Uh, no, I feel pretty good about that. Okay. And okay. small side of the grater, yeah? Yeah, we don't want, uh, you want it small because you're going to, again, you're going to pack this and you're going to squeeze all the water out of it and then we're going to mix together. So we don't want big stripes. We want the small stripes so that they're going to bind together really well. I feel kind of sad that you peeled those. I, I suppose you had to, though. Yes. You don't want the, you don't want the, the Why not? There. I don't know, because I want the skis on that side. So... 
don't know. You probably could have it in there. I like scales. I don't know. Is it a myth when your parents tell you that's where the vitamins are? Well, I mean, they're probably, there's probably some truth in it, but they're also like... Yeah, are they just lying because they don't want to peel the stuff? I, we, I didn't peel the potatoes when I made fries last night. And they're, that's yeah, the they're question. delicious. That's why I was like... Anyway, so it, it's... We'll do one of these, and I'm going to show you what um, what the product's going to be, and then I'll do the rest. Then you're going to hand them off to your sous chef. I could do that, but uh, you better get a glove, Denise. <laughs> don't don't do the paper towel in there. I'm not. I know. I should have faith in you. Yeah. You don't need me to boss you. No, I did. Sorry, don't listen to me. Oh, see, people. It's going to be fine. It's paper. That's why I'm around. Anyways. How's everybody doing this week? I hope everybody had a good week. If you're going back to work, if you're a teacher or... You if you're know, a teacher, God love you. Yeah. If you've got... If you're going back into a, you know, a, a university or somewhere like that, you know, things get getting weird. So just be safe. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. All those things your mom told you to do, you know? Except for wearing a mask. Which... That'd be weird. Yeah. Unless you were from a house full of robbers and, you know, she just was like... I, I, actually, I guess that's not weird. Some cultures, like, they, they wear masks when they feel ill because they think it's rude to infect other people. Which... What a weird concept. I agree. All right, so here's the thing with this. So we didn't... There's not much... We didn't release a lot of starch out of these. That's why... See how... I mean, this is... It's, weird. like, sticky. Yeah, see? Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's weird. Wait, I think we need to do a close up. Yeah, it's like. Ew, tea. it's very. It's the star. Glue, yeah. Yeah, it's like glue. So. Um, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that is weird. weird. Yeah. We should do the rest of that off camera. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of gross. <laughs> I look. <laughs> it's savage after dark. <laughs> uh, so, Ray is on here. How did Ray golf today? Uh, I think Ray got the red key today, which means he didn't golf as great as he probably wanted to. Oh, darn. But we had a good time doing it, so, I mean, that's all that really matters. You head. don't look sunburned, so you must have worn your sunscreen. I, I did. I, I knew that I, well, see, so, since Saturday night, you know, I didn't want to have a red face. And people go, well, why do you have such a red face? Why is Doug so tuned when he's doing side dish? All right. <laughs> so this is what, you, see, look at this. It's like glue. I think it's bound together. Yeah, it's pretty good. But we're going to we're gonna actually, we want to squeeze the water out of that. So I'm going to hand these off to Denise, and she's going to do some business here. So um, could you get away without using this egg? Yes. Given the amount of starchiness, but um, I, want, I want what else it's going to do. The egg is going to, not only is it going to be a binder, but it, it'll add a little bit of, um, um, you know, when you're baking and you put an egg wash on it, that's what you're going to get out of it too. Now, Amy does not like an egg wash. It, it does not see the point of it. She loves eggs, but does not. I don't like egg. the flavor of egg wash. This is weird. You like egg. I know. So. And a lot of people say it doesn't have a flavor. It just lends that, you know, look on the top, but yeah. I don't like it. So I'm gonna, I'm, so, gonna, you know. I'm gonna do it for you beat with the beat it with the men. But the kind of way is okay, don't get squirrely and move around because I'm gonna go get the D O G S is a treat. Okay, let's get to Um I got this tiny whisk. I don't know even know where it came from. I think it came in part of some sort of set or something. So it's probably used for something very specific. But um, I think it's pretty awesome. If anybody can watch his binging with Babbitt, he does this bit always where he only pitches things with a small, small um, whisk. So this is for, for Babbitt. Uh, anyway. Just going get it going. All right. So 
So we had a big bowl. This is going to be our mixing bowl. So I think what we're going to do before we go any further is we're just going to add our spice and stuff here. And we're not talking a ton of spice. We're talking a teaspoon, half teaspoon, quarter teaspoon, you know, and salt and pepper. And it's not really, and only, really only two tablespoons of parsley. So all, in all, it's not, it's really not that much. So. <laughs> it's, a, it's quite the workout, huh? Yeah. yeah. So I'm using one teaspoon of uh, granulated garlic. If you've got garlic powder, you use that too. Um, I'm using half a teaspoon of onion, granulated. Got, again, powder, use that. Um, these are roughly going to give you the same flavor. These might have a little bit, the granulars might be a little bit more intense because they're not pulverized, so you're, you're probably getting, technically getting more because they're granulars. I think it's opposite. I don't know. You get more if it's powderized. I don't know how that works. I don't, I don't know. know either. Yeah. So, and then, oh, yeah. this is the, this recipe that I'm actually working from for other things, but, it has dill, and I was like, I like dill. I mean, it's not going to add terrible amounts because it's only a quarter of a te uh, teaspoon, which is a little baby guy. Um, but it's obviously dried dill is pretty powerful. Dried herbs always use less. If, it, if a recipe calls for fresh herbs and you only have dry, I think you use like half as much on the dry side as you do the fresh because they're fresh is more intense in flavor. So we're just doing another quarter uh, of the of the Italian food. Now it's probably, this has got also uh, probably uh, basil and, and pine in it along with rose or, uh, along with oregano. And well, rosemary maybe. Let's see. Or organic herbs. Marjoram, thyme, rosemary, savory or 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 Oregano and basil. <laughs> oh, oregano. That's how they say it in some places. So I guess so. And then um, I'm just doing a healthy to start a pinch of that. And then, um, now, I don't want to, I'm not throwing the egg in or this or the um, pit, or parsley in until the because I want to get everything incorporated into the um, potatoes first. So that our, our oil is slowly coming up to temperature, so I'm going to turn that up so it's at 350 where we want it to be. And then, um, because these, are going to, these aren't going to cook very long. I mean, you're going to drop them in, they're going to be surrounded, and you're probably looking at Two, three minutes tops, and I would I would put that as getting golden golden. So just the thing with fried foods, especially when you're using a huge thing of oil like that, is um, like anything, it's gonna have hot spots, it's gonna have little cold spots. Just make sure that you know you're gonna use your spider and you're gonna get in there and move stuff around. Uh, right now we're sitting at I think you have less of a chance of that or risk of that if you have that Dutch oven, right? Cast iron. I think so. I mean, this is so this is an enamel cast iron Dutch oven. Um, I think this is like per se, if I'm correct. Nope, this is clean iron. Um, but it's a really good, again, it's heavy duty. I also use this uh, as a lid for my cast iron pan. When I'm baking bread, so because this has lower walls, I don't risk the chance of burning my hands and my uh, forearms mostly when I put the bread on there. To go the and then I use that as a cover, and it provides uh, a parent for, for the raising and trapping of steam that's inside the bread. So, how are we doing, Denise? Good. You're doing a hell of a job. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, you're gonna do onion rings next. You're also again. This is all of these things we're going to do. It's just it's so much prep if you think about it, right? Because you're going to be doing all of this stuff. You're preparing the potatoes. We're pre preparing the, the the kind of batter that the onion rings go in when we do those. And 
but up until then, it's, you're heating up oil, you're gonna drop them in there, it's gonna take like two or three minutes. You gotta swirl it around, make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom, which is very important. Um, because if you need to have enough oil in whatever you're doing, um, and because you don't want to, you want to be able, what's happening is when this gets hot enough, sorry, I'm, I'm rambling here. When it gets hot enough, the oil, it'll cook before it hits the bottom. And then, so it's fried enough, and then, but if it's not cooked, then it hits the bottom and sticks, which was the problem we had yesterday. And so that we had a lot of brown bits and stuff stuck to the bottom in the oil, which was causing other things to stick to it. And so it's really, again, it's just really important to make sure you have enough um, oil. This is a huge amount. I mean, and you, room, yeah. Yeah. Ah, you're going off camera. This is uh, one gallon, but we're going to reuse this because we're only doing one fry in here. And you can do up to like three or four. I would only do like three before I, I would replace it, but you can do more. Um, a lot of times people are like, oh, I can't do, I got the oil, but I can't, I don't want to use it and then have to throw it out because it's a cost, right? Um, you don't have to do it. What I would do is just fry your food, let it cool, get a nice big funnel, and then either take a ladle or if you're feeling saucy, pour it in yourself and then fill up your container again. Strain it? You can strain it first if you wanted With to. With cheesecloth? Um, or what? I would just use um, a fine mesh strainer. Yeah, mine's down there. So. We well, got the little guy there. This would also, yeah, this guy would work. Um, he's very tiny. I don't, I don't know if I would use him. It's but so if nice. it's the opening of your container. That's true, too. You want to be whatever, whatever. All right, so Denise is Look at her. She's, Ta -da. she's got it. She's loving the glue that we've so made glue. over here. So. Yeah, that is okay. Tricky. Weird. We're gonna, oh yeah, that's weird looking. <laughs> you stuck to that potato. Sorry. It's okay. Hand off. I won't put you on the camera. Good. Hand off. <laughs> High five. Thanks, no. Denise. <laughs> All right. And uh, that is what you're left with. A gooey mess. Very starchy. Um, could you use a lower starch potato? Probably. But you want it to, you want these to stick together. You don't want um, you don't want to go anywhere. All right, so we're just gonna dump this. And this really sticky. Yeah. Oh, my, I made glue. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, it's so sticky that I gotta like wash off my hands every time I do it. Okay. So, this is a clean tea towel or dish towel that we have. And all I'm doing is pulling the four edges together. These are russet potatoes, yeah? Yes. These were big ones. Um, you can probably, like I say, if you've got smaller ones or whatever. All right, so this is where it gets going to get tricky. because You want to get this in a tight ball and just spin. Now, let's see actually how much quickly we get out of it. So we talked about this like when we were working with the, when we made the cream spinach and putting yeah. it in the towel to dry it off and yeah. like people take it outside, like whip it around, which I think is hilarious. Okay, so. Like, there's uh, nothing coming out of that, is there? Not really. Yeah, I see some of the towels getting a little more damp. Okay, let me move in here so we can see. It's, you really, there, there's got to be a machine, right? That you can get, <laughs> and you can twist, and because, like, not a home chef, you don't need that. Yeah, I mean, that is just weird. It's weird. Believe me, I'm going to try and, What does it feel like? Um, it feels kind of like Play Doh in a towel. So, all right. I mean, there's not really that much uh, moisture coming up. Yeah. All right. So it doesn't say, hold on. Did I miss something? <laughs> it did. It says drain well and let cool, which we didn't let cool, but I mean, that's not going to be a problem. It's not like they're going to release a ton of liquid out of them. Let's see. Oh, Whoa, that's like a. It's like a looks like <laughs> dough. <laughs> <laughs> 
where you get with live TV, people. <laughs> All right. So, okay. I, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I don't know how you're going to get that I'm out. I'm going to use a glove. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I'm going to use two gloves, actually. Um, so I don't have to want, keep washing my hands every single time. Have anybody uh, else attempted to ever make tater tots at home or, you know, uh, non, like, fresh fries or anything like that? Man, I tell you what, a fresh fry. I think you're putting that glove on wrong. I there know, you but that's, you know, I got two hands. <clears throat> um, fresh fries, oh, they're so good. And they're like, you can you can cut them up and, and put them into a... Uh, um, I'm worried about this. I wouldn't be. How can it be bad? I well, mean, I don't think it's going to be bad. I'm just worried about how are you going to get all those dry ingredients incorporated in that when it's so darn sticky? That's a good question. That's a great question. Thanks. I'm full of them today. Yeah. So I don't know, but we're going to, we'll do it together. And who's supposed to wash all that potato out of the towel? Uh, you put it in there. Oh, and then <laughs> all right. So I'm going to add the egg. Uh, the egg is also going to kind of loosen this up a little bit. So, yes. I think the gloves are a good idea. So, you ever make a meatloaf at home? Oh, there you go. A meatloaf is very similar to how uh, this is going to feel to you. I mean, this is a very good idea for this one. I don't know. It seems effective. Sure. All right. So, I don't know why I keep turning the camera to the wrong angle. Sorry, everybody. This is it. Right? I'm just, we just want this to come together and mix together. That's really it. And then. I'm pretty sure this is not how Orida does it. They got a big <laughs> industrial machine. <laughs> Who said that? I like Ryan's comment. <laughs> Ryan said, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. That's right. <laughs> you can do anything with a potato. As Sam Wise Cams you once said, you boil them, you mash them, you stick them in a stew. All right, see, that wasn't that bad. Um, now, what I, could you do this a day ahead? Have this in, you know, I might, I might maybe give this a little rinse. I don't know. See, is it hot? You mean before you stuck it in there? Before I stuck it in here? Yeah, before you stuck it in the dry ingredients, you might rinse it. I might rinse it a little bit, but. Is it still hot? No, not really. Okay. It's warm, but it's not hot. Oh, you are getting the stuff mixed in there. Yeah. So it's really easy to handle. It's just, it really feels like, just like, kind of like. Meatloaf. Meatloaf or Play-Doh. Are you or, sure you want to take those off? Yeah, because I need to do some chopping. Ah. And this box of love is like $4 for like 100 Yeah, so. but they're not great for the environment. Well, that's true, but. I can only do so much. Doug Bookie, hater of the environment. It's true. It's not true. It's not true at all. That's probably more than I need, but yeah. You know, no doubt. Okay, how do we cut herbs? Uh, we just do it once. I'm not really rolling this right now because I want them. It just says chopped. So I am just doing one chop through. I'm not bruising it. You want a sharp knife. And then turning it's different than me going <laughs> you don't want that now this is just going to add and i got to make sure so okay this is a garnish only i don't know what you do I saw some recipes. You could add bacon if you wanted to have like a, you know, one of that. Uh, this is really good for. There's a restaurant here in Sparks called uh, BJ's Barbecue, and they do this dish called uh, Kick-Ass Fries. And holy moly, are they good! Um, they're just basically a pile of really crispy French fries with barbecue, like pork on top. And then sour cream, cha or uh, green onions, and uh, you can get it with egg on there. Or bacon. Or bacon, that's true. San shout out to Sandor for the bacon. <laughs> we were like eating there one night, and Sandor was like, you know, you need to order this with bacon. We're like, look at this guy. Fancy, fancy meat over here. All 
All right, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some of this. I'm gonna split it up, maybe a little bit. You know, sixty forty. Uh, and again, I'm gonna get a similar model this time because I don't need. Could you just put like oil on your hands, or that might mess up the whatever juju is going on in there? I think so. I would rather I'd rather keep it. Now, ideally, I should have chopped this beforehand, and then I wouldn't have had to change the yeah. five times. But, you know, such is life. Um, right. Okay, the more this cools, just as another heads up, it's probably going to get, you know, harder. It's going to solidify. It's not going to get harder. Again, Stiffer. But, yeah. So, what's the next step? Form them into tots. Now, you want to go... Standard top size. He went up to all this work to make homemade tops. I'd make it at least double size. No. Yeah. You don't. You want to top this big by this? I'm not. I don't want regular. Yeah, tops. I just want a lot of them. No. So this is going to be the tricky part because see, this is why I need another cloth. Yeah, get it. Oh, do you need help? Yes. Oh, we're gonna, are we going to do it like a doctor where you just put it on my hand? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to do it off camera because Amy doesn't want to do it on camera. So I was thinking about this, and I was thinking, like, why wouldn't you pipe these and then just, like, cut them, cut the row that you piped? Wouldn't that be easier? You could pipe them right into the oil. You could pipe them right into the oil. You probably could. Anyway. That's way too big. No, is isn't. We're doing one. We're going to try it out. We'll see how it looks. If we don't like it, we'll steal it. I think it should that. be half that size. Huh? Yeah, Natalie says like a churro. Exactly. This is exactly my thought, Natalie. You and I and Denise, we all agree. Yeah, well. But it's not our show. That's right. Don't be disappointed. <laughs> Fine. You want to cut it half? Here, take it off. Yeah. So I now, think that's better. Okay, we're doing generalized tops here. We don't need the fancy, we don't have a fancy forma machine like Orida does or anything. You other. could measure them though. We do have a scoop. Do you want a scoop? That, I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Okay, I don't think you, if I go like this. Ooh, we're at, three, uh, we're at 360, perfect. Turn the temperature down a little bit. We're gonna throw this bad boy in here. And Where are the, oh, are the scoops in there? Yes. You should go down there and look, Amy. I know. Wow. This is a move. You know what else you could do? You could use two spoons. There's only one down here. Yeah, I don't know. You could use two spoons. You do I don't know where they're at. You look funny poking around there. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Not my favorite, buddy. <laughs> all right, so here's what we got. I don't remember where I found. First of all, um, you're going to get bits to come off of it. But the thing that we want to happen immediately is that it's frying and floating. So it didn't stick to the bottom, and that's what the, having the oil at the right temperature and also having it not is going to do for you. Um, so I think, I don't know where they are. I think they are over there. You didn't see them? We're going to just use two spoons, I think. Okay. I mean, unless we can find them. It seems a shame because, like, we have the tool that does this. Yeah, I don't know where it is, though. So I took the rubber glove off just in case I got it too close to the oil and it didn't, didn't, uh, didn't stick to my hand. And then I have a, like a rubber hand. Right. Also, so you can see the oil is kind of just like, wow, because the water is boiling out of it. But it's going to, you know, that's going to calm down as this goes. So what do you want to have on hand as these are finishing up? I mean, I mean, I mean, that looks like a tater top to me. <laughs> I'm going to leave it for one more minute because I, I want to get a plate. Denise, could you grab a plate? Yeah. And um, the other thing you could do is if you've got like a half sheet or quarter sheet pan, you could um, you could put them a, a, with a baking sheet down with a uh, cookie uh, 
cooler. What am I, what are those called? Cooling rack. Cool, there we go. And you could uh, put those down. But, so you're gonna rinse and repeat here, right? Here you go. Look at that bad boy. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I think we did a thing here, folks. I think we did a beautiful thing in which we're going to do. Now, while these are frying, so frying, there's, you know, a science to frying, probably. Also, I didn't crowd the pan or the pot here um, because I only put two in. But if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the spoons and start forming them pretty fast, and I'm going to drop them in. Um, so you're going to get nice, prickly bits. So let's do that. And I'm going to. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, stand to the side. I'm, I'm getting better. So who knows? Maybe this won't work. I don't know. I think it will work. And I think, um, you know, the whole taut shape thing is just uh, what we've been conditioned to think of them as. But yeah, don't let big potato tell you what it's about. <laughs> I think you should probably just put spoonfuls of it in there and it'd be delicious. Yeah. Well, that is active. Okay, so show us what you got there before you throw it in. So I'm, I'm just kind of a, I'm kind of scooping and I'm making a generalized, almost kind of egg shape as I put it in. Okay. Um, there's probably, there is a fancy word for this, but I don't Cornell. know. Cornell. Yeah, that's it. What Denise said. What is it? Cornell. Cornell? That's when you put something in a spoon like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I still like my piping oh, idea. Yeah. So, are we, what are we really looking at here? A fried potato fritter? I yeah. Mean, is it, what is the difference between that and a top? I don't think there's, you know. I think if, I don't know, but I think a fritter would have breading on the outside. Maybe, that's true. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. You could probably get this in and then, you know. Maybe egg shape it up a little bit, maybe a little higher. And then the part about the spoon is you can just go right in, not your fingers. Again, they're they're top esque. They kind of look like cheddar bay biscuits from Red Lobster. <laughs> oh man. Does anybody else just really love cheddar bay biscuits from Red Lobster? <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what we should do one episode is yeah, cheddar bay biscuits. Do those home, from scratch. That to me is like, that sounds delicious. That's going on the list. Um, the nice part about this is, you know, you give it a little pound or a condense in there. <clears throat> so this is the thing about frying and there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of passive time, which is good, but you do have to pay attention because um, you don't want things to get out of control. So what are we, a minute, maybe a minute and a half total? And this, I mean, what we're looking at here is we're looking for that golden. And so that golden is also helping from the egg that we added in there. It's really, really going to be a thing. Now, the thing I like about these kind of, Crazy shapes. Oh, we got two stuck together. So that's what we're afraid of, right? We don't want that. All right. Um, is when you're making your dipping sauces, which we didn't even talk about that. I mean, I'm just a plain old ketchup guy. I also do like uh, a little honey mustard every once in a while. Um, so that's some things to keep in mind. Of like, keep your dipping sauces going. Do this as a, a group because then somebody could be forming them into shape. Somebody could be frying them, taking them out. Um, the other thing that you can think about here is if you were to, um, if you were just to, um, you want to add salt to these. Sorry, you want to add salt to these as they're coming out. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing these, so that's where somebody else could be just like. And the salt I'm going to use, like, I'm not going to use sea salt for this. I mean, this is not technically sea salt, but it's a fine grain. It's going to stick a little bit better than... Um, You're not going to use, like, a more flaked salt? No, because I want it to stick and, and, be, and then kind of melt. So, 
This is what makes fried food so delicious. Salt. So, I'm not going to do too many more on camera, um, but I will finish these up. But we are going to we are going to taste these and see. Oh, rice offering curry ketchup up as a. Oh dipper. yeah, that'd be good. You could do a little sriracha ketchup too. Mm. Um, a little sriracha mayonnaise and ketchup would also be a really good dipping sauce. Um, and then. Tartar sauce. I love tartar sauce. I made homemade tartar sauce last night. It would be really good with these. It would be. Um, so here's a thing to keep in mind, too. If you've got a little strainer or spider like this, kind of if you've got floating brown bits on the top. I don't know if we can really here. see those. But there's just like little potato bits that are coming off. Those we're just getting, we're just dumping because we don't want, the, they'll stay in there and then they're going to start to burn and then your oil is going to get weird. Gotcha. So, again, I'm just giving these a turn every once in a while to um, get them up and running again. Did your oil temperature up? Um, actually, it's maintaining because I have the temperature on the stove fairly high. So, I actually have it on. The little tab, it says high, which, what temperature is that? Uh, <laughs> hot. Well, hot you enough? could nail it with your, uh... yeah. What is it? So it's, I see 360, which is probably right about where you want to be in terms of oil, 350 to 375. I would not go above 375 because what you do, it's going to be, your oil is going to be really volatile when you put something in. So this is, Three sixty ish. So I mean, right on what that candy thermometer says. Good. Um, Good to know the tools are accurate. That's right. Um, hold this up. Oh yeah. Turn sure. So the reason why I mean you probably know this, but if you don't, frying foods is a fast way to cook things like fried chicken and things like that because you're basically enveloping the whole thing you're cooking, usually in a breading or something like that, and it's in, in, it's 350 degrees over the whole thing and direct contact. So that he's just, it's cooking it from all sides really rapidly. All right. Oh, leave the heat here. I'm gonna turn it down so that we can come back after the camera's off. And, but let's look at these bad boys. I mean, Am I right or am I right? They look delicious. They smell pretty unbelievable. You're gonna do this with the new guys, get a little, a little salt. Whoops, this guy's trying to escape. If you've got asbestos hands like I do, give them a little toss. You want the salt, because the salt, again, when it's hot, it's gonna cling to it, and it's also gonna start to, to melt a little bit and, and dissolve, so. Um, you gonna try one? Yeah, let's try it. Do you want a little ketchup or something? No. Nope. Tartar sauce? No. Okay. Oh man. Try this one. Why? Why? why I don't know. I'm gonna try this one and see if it if what the texture on the inside is. A little chewy. Wow. It's pretty good. This one, I mean, you probably could have got it for another couple of minutes or another half a minute or so. Mine's perfect. But that mixture of the seasoning is really, really good. It doesn't overpower the potato. The salt is really is really forward present because we're adding it at the end like you would uh, French fries or anything else. <clears throat> and to me, man, Throw an egg on top of that with all the stuff. You could have that as a really, really nice side dish to be anything you're doing and or an appetizer if you're looking for that. And I mean, it took 40 minutes from really start to finish for us to have most of this done. I would probably parboil the potatoes earlier, allow them to cool so you can handle them. And then, um, and rinse them, maybe rinse off the outside just to help with that stickiness I don't but, know. Does the stickiness really help them keep together when you put them in the oil? 
It if really they did. didn't have that stickiness, they might yeah. have gone. Bleh. I think so. The egg helps with that too. This I, this is sort of a combination of a couple recipes, just because I wanted to make sure that we're you know. The other thing too is the flour. So I didn't add actually add the flour this time because the egg and the amount of starch in here was the, a binder enough. If you if you find that the potatoes you're using are falling apart or loose the flour plus the egg together are going to create a good binder. So, I mean, gluten-free. <laughs> I think the addition of the fresh herb too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you didn't did, even put that on there, you did, but you oh, should yeah, there you go. Right <laughs> so fancy. But I mean, it, in the mixture, it yeah. was good. Yeah, it is. It, it's, I don't know. It's just a little bit brightness to it. But yeah, that's it. That's another episode of Side Dish. Um, thanks for coming along with it and, and watching us, uh, you know, sometimes fumble our way through this. I think we're getting pretty good overall, um, even if we didn't get our lights uh, in place early enough. But, you know, <laughs> um, so next, remember, next Saturday, pre-recorded. Um, so it, I'll put it up. It'll be available. It'll go live. seven. It'll go live as available at 7 p.m. same time frame. And then... Um, if you like the video, comment, like, subscribe, all this fun stuff. Um, and just remember, everybody, it's kind of crazy out in the world. So be kind to each other. Uh, be loyal. And go out and do something nice for somebody else. And thanks for watching Side Dish, and we'll see you next week.